In this video I'm going to show you how to use the website surveymonkey.com to create an online form which you can then share online with other people. This video is particularly useful for teachers following unit 6.4 of the Project Live Computing Scheme of Work as it's a good alternative if your pupils don't have a Google account and are therefore unable to access Google Forms. First of all you'll need to go to the website surveymonkey.com and then click on the button which says sign up for free. You'll then need to register each of your pupils for a free account and the great thing about SurveyMonkey is that you don't need to use a different email each time you register a different pupil. So as long as you register a different username for each pupil it will allow you to register as many accounts as you need. So for example if I have a pupil called John in my class I could register him with a specific username such as John01784 and then I could choose a password for him and then in the contact email box there I can use my own email address or in this case a class gmail address that we've got and then when I click on the sign up button that will then create John's account and then you can see in the top right hand corner there is John signed into his account now as I say this will work for all of your pupils so if I then register let's say another pupil called Sarah so Again, I'm just go to the register button. So I'll just click on, on sign up. And now I can register Sarah. So I could give Sarah a username such as such as this one. And then if I want to use the same password, I can use the same password that I used for John or if it's easier I can create a new one and then in the contact email I can just use that same email address again so I don't need to register uh, a brand new separate email I can just use the same one so obviously this is why it makes it easier if your pupils don't have their own email address you can just use that one email address to register each of your separate pupils so you'll do that obviously for each pupil in your class each time keeping a note of what the username and password will be for them to log in with so maybe keep track of that perhaps on a spreadsheet so there's Sarah signed into her account and again you see her username in the top right hand corner so once you've registered all your pupils they themselves will then need to go to surveymonkey.com so I'll just sign out now as Sarah and I'll just sign in as John. So John will go to surveymonkey.com then he'll need to click on the sign in button and then he'll just need to put in the username that I registered him with and the password as well. And then he can just click on sign in. So once he's signed into his account, again you'll be able to see in the top right hand corner his username there and then obviously at the end of the lesson you'll be able to just click on that and sign out. And then to start creating his survey or his form he just needs to click on the button there where it says create survey. And he's going to build a new survey from, from scratch. This is the free version that we're using so that's really the only option. And in that box there he's going to put the title of it so in this example we'll just create a little spag quiz we'll just choose education as a category and then we we'll just click on the let's go button so he's put the title of his quiz in now so now he just needs to add in his questions so we go to the left hand side here underneath where it says builder and there are the different types of question choices that you can choose from in this example I'm just going to keep them all all multiple choice so I'm just going to select multiple choice and then that will open up uh, a new window and then you can see there it's, it's asking me to put in question number one so within that box there I can type in the first question 
and I've got some formatting tools there as well so I can I can make the text stand out a bit more I can attach links to it I can change the text color I, I could attach an image to go with the question as well if I want to um, just for this example we'll just have the actual question and then in these boxes here underneath obviously because it's a multiple choice question I just need to fill in my multiple choice answers And if I need to add in another answer box, I just press this add button here. And then I can just add in another answer choice. And then if I want to give people the option to type in an answer of their own, I just need to enable that box there. And then if I just scroll down and then just click on click on the save button at the bottom. So that's question one set up. If I need to go back in and edit it at all, I can just click on, on the edit button. If I click on this options button here, this will just enable me just if I had enable that box there, that just means that people have to answer that particular question. And it will just come up with that text there. This question requires an answer if people don't answer it. And you can customize that if you want to and put your own text in there. If you, well, it'll do as it is, I think. And if I enable that box there, that would just randomize the answer choices. So each time a different person goes to take my quiz, it will just put the answer choices in a different order. So there's a few different settings I can change there. And then when I'm happy with that, I can just click on save. And then you can see there's a little star next to it. That's just indicating it's a question which requires an answer. Otherwise, you won't be able to submit the form. So... When I'm happy with that, I just click on, on the Done button. And then again, with that Done button, you can even customize that as well. If you, if you feel the need to, you can change uh, some of the text there as well. But I can just keep it as it is, so just click on Save. So there's question one done. So now I need to put in question two. So if I just scroll down, and then just underneath that, it will just say Add New Page. So if I just click on that link there, which says Add New Page. And then I can just add in question two. So again, I just need to choose what type of question it's going to be. So again, I'm just going to stick with a multiple choice question. And then we see question two. So I just need to enter in question two. And then again, just put in the answer choices in the boxes underneath. This one, I'm just going to have a true or false as the two choices. So I don't need that box there. So I can just click on that cross there and that will just get rid of that box. And again, I'm just going to the options, and I want to make it a required question. I don't want to give people the option to, to skip the question, so I'll just enable that box there where it says it requires an answer. And then just click on save. And again, I don't need to change those buttons, so I'm just just click on save there. So that's question two. I'll just add in one more question now. Obviously, I probably have more than just three questions, but we'll just stick with three for this example. So just add in one more new page now. And then again, just choose the question type. So we'll go for multiple choice again. And then we'll just enter in question three. And then again, just the same process, just enter in the, the answer choices. I think maybe this time it might be a bit difficult to see that, so I'll highlight the ones this time and I'll, I'll maybe have each one a slightly different colour. Hopefully that'll make it just stand out a bit more. And I just need to add in one more, so just press that add button again, that'll just add in a new answer choice box. And then again I'll just make that bold and, and change the colour of it as well so it's a bit easy to see. And then again with this one I might just give people the option to add in their own answer as well if you think it's a different answer. So just enable that box there and then just click on save. So there's question three in now as well. And 
again I'll just go into options and just enable that box there just to make it a required question and maybe just enable that one as well just to randomize the, the answer choices each time and then I'll just click on save again you can see it's starred there which, which just indicates it's a required question so once I've added in all the questions then another thing I could do is just change the theme of the form a bit now I've not got too many things to choose from here just using the free version of it I can basically just change the, the border color really and, and that's about it uh, if I was using the paid for version I could customize it um, in lots of different ways add, adding in images and, and things like that but just because it's the free version then just got the option really just to, to change the colour of the border so I'll choose choose that one I think and then once I've done that I can just click on the button at the top where it says next just click on that and you'll see now that that's generated a web link to my form and what I want to do is share that link really with as many people as I can uh, I want to get lots of people filling in my quiz so I've got lots of results to analyse so one way of doing it is I could copy the web link so if I just highlight the link and then just go to edit and copy or right click on right click and copy and then I could go into somewhere like qrstuff.com which is a QR code generator website and I could paste that link within that so if I paste the link within this box here and then so I just go to right click and paste and then I can just click on download and that will download a QR code so when people scan that with their device that will take them straight to my quiz that I've just made and then people can can fill in the quiz on their on their device so that's one way of sharing it uh, I'll just go back into SurveyMonkey again um, and basically just if you share that link so if you just send that link to people email it to people upload it to your Twitter feed or to your blog or to your website as soon as people click on that link it will take them to to the form so there's the link again there I've just pasted it into a document so I'll just click on that link and it takes takes you to that form so as I say you could put the link on your school website school blog pages Twitter feeds Facebook pages things like that and I suppose another way you could do it as well is to actually embed the form within the page as well so if you just scroll down slightly there's a button there that says website if you click on that that will generate uh, an embed code so if you click on this button here where it says embed survey you can just choose what what size you want it to be so once it's embedded within within the page that's the size it will be so you can just alter the size there so you can make it a bit wider just the height of it as well and then it'll show you how it will actually look once it's embedded in, in the page you can change the border colour as well and when you've done that you just, just click on next And there's a few settings options there you can change you probably don't need to to change any of those so I'll just click on next again and then that's basically an embed code so again if I just highlight that code so just drag my cursor over it and then just right click and copy or edit and copy and then if I go into somewhere like my blog page for example and I go to write a new post And then I can just right click and paste or edit and paste the actual code within the text viewer of, of the body of the post. And then you can just see there that, that it's been embedded. So I'll just preview that and just, just check that it's put it within that. Yeah, so there's there's the form there. So people when they go to to our blog page they can fill in the form. And then basically what happens is every time somebody fills in the form and they submit it, all the results get stored within 
SurveyMonkey. So when you're logged in, you can just click on the Analyze Results button and then it will, will show the results of, of people's responses to the, to the survey. Now obviously at the moment nobody's filled in, in the form yet, so that I've not got anything to analyse. Um, but if I just sign out of John, and I'll just fill in a response. And then once John next signs into his SurveyMonkey account, you'll be able to have a look at the responses to his quiz that he shared with people. Now, obviously I've only been able to respond to the quiz once. You can only do one response per computer, so there's only one response there at the moment. Obviously, as more people submit their responses to his quiz, there'll be more uh, results there to analyze. Now what he needs to do is click on this button here where it says analyze results and then that will give him a breakdown of what answer people put for each particular question. So obviously there's not much to, to look at there because there's only one response but as more people submit their results you'll be able to see a breakdown of the percentage of answers that, that people gave to each of the questions and then if he clicks on the individual responses he can look in detail uh, at each individual response to his quiz and he can an analyze and, and see what answer each person put to each particular question. So the idea now is that he would have a, a look at his results um, and then make, perhaps make some notes and then the idea would be that he then presents those findings within a PowerPoint or other similar presentation software.